the club uh, has uh, received, uh, the, received a request by someone to uh, honor um, two of the best uh, lady players of all time. They are still with us, thank goodness. So it's not a dead legend lecture. It's uh, referring to the Georgian grandmasters uh, Nona Gaprindashvili and Maya Chibudanidze. Both were world champion, respectfully, and uh, respectively, and uh, we will see some of their games. More than anything, I think that uh, you will find out that uh, typically to women's chess, it's very aggressive, a little bit coffee houseish, and again, the at the level of grandmaster, of course, they understand everything; they know more than just that. But king hunting is very popular, <laughs> and you will see it um, in our game. The first game, um, I like the finish, but I have to say. I like her resourcefulness. I think she was playing for a win against a lower rated opponent with the black pieces. She was willing to take risks and she was in trouble, actually. White was better, but again, the burden of proof was on white and it was very hard to pass the test. White didn't. So she's playing uh, Lazarevich from what used to be Yugoslavia. So F4, already non compromising. She's black. C5, knight F3, G6. Again, a very good system. Just in case white wanted to uh, try to play something like the b3, f4, knight f3, this is kind of a good way to mess up with that. So, e3, bishop g7, d3, white is playing a bit passively, but not abnormal. e6, already a bit un uncompromising. Notice that you already have g6 and the bishop here, but she doesn't want to put the knight on f6 where he doesn't have that much of a future. She prefers to put it on a7, very much more flexible. Here, here, castles, knight c6, e4. One would wonder why it wasn't that played immediately. d3 and e4, but we'll never find the answer. d6, c3, castles, bishop to e3, rook b8. Very similar to the uh, concept behind a closed Sicilian, black is intending to play the moves b5, b4, and do his worst on the queen side where he has the advantage. So white plays d4. Not my favorite move, most favorite move. In this position, I think it made sense to play a4 to provoke a6, and then to just play knight bd2. Wait until the right moment to just play knight c4 if you can, knight e5 if you, if you eventually get hit by d5. OK, d4. Now it's time for black to do something, because if I'm going to get to go d5 myself right now, very questionable where the knight on c6 is going to land. So, f5, immediately hitting the light squares, e5, takes, takes, knight d5. Needless to say that black is not intending to play pawn d5 here, after which his bishop on c8 is going to look very, very French slash Queen's Gambit decline like. So, knight d5, attacking the bishop, the bishop retreats to c1, <coughs> and again, in this position, it's more or less equal, but it's very close. The bishop on g7 is pacified. The bishop on c8 is a bit weak. The question is how to do something. She starts. Bishop h6. Very provocative play. Again, to tell you that this is the best move, I'm not sure that I can. But again, I really like the attitude. When you're playing a low-rated player, you're black, your opponent is white, you have to try to create some nagging chances. And this is what she does. OK, g3. Now she took on e5. Again, maybe hoping for f, e, f4. Of course, that's not going to happen. So it takes with the deep on and b5. Action on both sides. Now white played knight c3. Reasonable move. Queen b6 check. Again, a move that needs no explanation. Developing the queen. King moves. And rook d8. Again, it's easy to be critical in hindsight. But I think that if I was white, if I was black, I would first take the knight on c3 cause some damage to the pawn structure, then go rook d8. Basically because I believe that it's going to be very hard for white to occupy d4 before I generate all my play on the queen side. But she opted to play this. So takes, takes, queen b3. Again, in this position, white is doing quite OK. No question about it. Bishop f8, again, in anticipation of the move, bishop e3. So bishop e3, bishop to c5. Pretty normal. Takes, takes, rook d1. Again, in this position, you're wondering, OK, what's so big deal about this game? And 
the big deal is that black is trying to win it. And she's going to just do everything in her capacity to try to get something moving here. So knight e7, again, the only move. If I get to take twice on d5, and then rook c1, of course, white is the only one playing for a win. So knight e7, rook c1, queen b6, takes and takes. So for now, we see that black has managed to get some sort of an initiative. The knight on d5 is multifold better than the knight on f3. <coughs> but you notice that there's some tactics in this position. And white correctly plays this move. Queen takes b5. You notice that bishop c8 is hanging. In the case of queen takes b5, rook takes c8 might be inconvenient. So queen e3, that's what she was banking on. Because otherwise, you'd wonder, you wonder, OK, what else can you play? You lost a pawn. And what are you going to do? Well, you're going to move this bishop. You can't take the queen. You can't. I mean, you, you, it looks like you're really stuck. So after takes, takes, and the bishop on c8, of course, I meant to say take, bishop takes. If you take, then rook c8, yeah? So she was banking it on the move queen to e3, sacrificing not only a pawn, but also the exchange with the hope of messing things up. Again, this is a great attitude, I think, by the, by the second player. But objectively, it really should not have worked. But again, it's very hard for white to play. So at first, she thought for a long time and played queen to b8. I think that if she would have played queen to e8, I don't know exactly what black would have done to win. But I think that it would have been pretty hard. I think this, this should guarantee at least a draw. Queen e8, no, well, not at least, just a draw. Queen e8, king g7, and then I'm assuming rook c7 check, right? And I have a perpetual, so yeah. But she decides to take, takes, king f1, <coughs> and now king g7. Very brave play. This king is now becoming a part of the attack. And of course, queen takes c8, queen takes f3 is very, very messy, with knight e3 coming. So now white has to be on her toes. Now, when you put it in the computer, the computer is very confident, shows you exactly what you're supposed to do. But when you're human, it's much, much harder. I'm just curious, just intuitively, if you had white in this position, what would you play? Let's hear some suggestions, just to see. Again, I'm not giving you a whole lot of time to try to solve it. So, and she had, white had plenty of time on the clock, although not infinite. But just intuitively, throw a move. Okay, uh, other ideas? Anybody else? I want to hear any move that Arjun? Queen takes c8. Queen takes c8, okay. Anything else? One per customer, Arjun. <laughs> Have you ever managed to make two moves on your board at once? <laughs> no. no, I don't think so. Sid? Rook to c3? Maybe. Knight takes c3? More. Messy. You can get into a mate net. So you see, you guys suggested the trivial moves, but you, none of you suggested the move that the computer suggested. But the computer suggests this move because it's just so simple, queen b3. After queen b3, the computer says that white is just winning. Oh, I found that. What's that? I found that, eventually. Well, uh, eventually, but oh, yeah. she, she didn't find it. <laughs> and it's very easy to go wrong. I think that queen c8, queen f3 is dangerous. I think rook c3 takes. And queen a7 was played in the game. So here, king h6. <coughs> and in this position, she played queen a3, trying to defend the knight. I think this is one move too late. Um, already, the, the position of the white king is a bit precarious. You have to be careful about what you do. Because black has a very simple idea. You'll see it coming after queen, h, queen a3. Um, I think this is not easy already for white. I think queen takes a7 was. I think it's, it's, it's a mistake, in my opinion. I think simply um, queen b3, and yeah. So queen a3, and black plays king h5. Very imaginative. This is really, really a smart move. Obviously, this, this, this takes care of rook takes c8 because of queen f1 mate. Rook e1, queen f2. Now it becomes very, very difficult to stop ideas like moving the bishop and knight coming in and yeah difficult so the game concluded with queen d3 bishop a6 
Again, for the third time, trying to lure the queen away to the bishop so you can take on f3. And this time, it's answered this way. And knight e3. That's it. I think that here, the game actually ends here, but I saw in another source that the game continued here and here. In what position? Um, this here? Well, after knight you bishop Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can dedicate this to Grandmaster Ben Feigold who says always play bishop f1, although usually he means it in the other side of the board. Yeah. So again, a very coffee house like game by Nona, and again, this is one of her early games. This game was played many, many years ago, as you can see. In 61, okay, she was much, much younger. So, an impressive style. And now we will see a game where she beat Judith Polgar. We'll see what you think. So, e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, d4. One of the wildest lines in this opening, and you will see how it continues. Knight d7, takes, takes, castles. Queen h4, this is all theory, old theory, still till today. This is from 1990, I think, right? Yeah, in the Novi Sad Olympiad. C4, so basically there's like a, a, already a race. Black is gonna go left, white already went right. And there's pressure on the center as well, trying to undermine the knight. Castles, C5. Again, if I had a four-hour lecture, like I always like to say, I can talk about the intricates of the position, why this move and not that move. But here, of course, is a, is a race. One side is trying to attack the king on this side, the other one on the other side, and watch what happens here. Pawn g5, again, one of the more aggressive lines. I don't know the, the theory at some point. Around here, it's still theory, I know. Bishop g7, knight e2, rook g 8 Somewhere around here, my theory ends. So if this... If somebody can contribute beyond, then that'll be great, but otherwise we're just seeing the game. So queen e1, this move I'm not familiar with. <coughs> of course, the idea is that white is a bit concerned about ideas like rook e6, h6. If that happens very fast, he's gonna also go very fast. So he's trying to preempt it by trading queens. A queen trade will be very, very welcome here. So queen here, Nona retreated with her knight, so that f3, the knight will not be under attack. Queen d2, trying to take advantage of the fact that now pawn g5 is under hit and can be taken. Knight goes back, and she plays the aggressive move, queen a5. I suppose if she would have played here queen e1, maybe we will never have seen this game ever. So, queen a5. Now the battle really begins. So, king b8, a forced necessity, obviously. f3, knight back to f6. G3, this is all questionable. This idea, I think, is a bit questionable. <coughs> I don't know exactly what the fear was. I don't know, maybe she was afraid of rook takes e2. I, I'm assuming she wanted to play b4, but was afraid of rook e2, bishop e2, queen d4, and queen takes a1. That's the only thing I can assume. Um, and therefore, she tried to chase the queen away. But this, in my opinion, is a weakness that's just not, not well placed. So, still, when a player at the level of Judith Polgar plays it, you know, it was after some thought. Queen h5, a4, yes, Sergeant. Who is white and who is black? Judith Polgar is white, and Nona Gapindash really is black. Yeah. So, knight g4. Now we start. In this position, again, it looks like it's going to be a race, because white is going to go b4, b5, c6. If this happens, black is just going to, well, die. Right? Or b6. There's just going to be too much, too much initiative around the... Uh, the king. And you wonder how to continue here as black, but she shows immediately. Knight g4. Now some moves, some sacrifices you play, and you kind of wonder if your opponent will take them or not, and if you can, but here you know that there's just no way to decline the sacrifice. So, takes, bishop takes, attacking e2, knight f4. Again, playing very, very aggressively because I'm about to take on d4, there's no way to defend it practically, e2 is hanging. And you can, some of you might already feel optically, just by looking at it, that the queen alone on a5 is not enough to attack. 
the white king, there's just this array, the rooks are disconnected, the bishop hasn't moved yet, and you just have that feeling, that sense, that black is gonna hit first. Even though she's down a piece, it's obvious that the initiative is worth every bit of it. So Judith is trying to defend, probably the only try. Bishop takes d4 check, king g2, and of course this needs to be taken and taken. Okay, so far, yes. Um, I have a question. What yes. To h3, the knight is attacking it. Oh. That's why the knight needs to be eliminated. And it was eliminated. So now the question is how to continue as black. Because again, just by looking at the position, one can sense that black is doing really, really well. On the other hand, white has ideas of her own. Bishop takes c7, and d8 is weak, and a7 is weak, and there are chances. So what to play? No, no, I'm positive already saw it. There's no way you can play a move like knight g4 without, <coughs> without seeing already this position. And you simply play bishop e5. Just a simple defensive move. Now we can see that the white position down a pawn, bishop h3 is threatened, winning an exchange, and things are just not looking up. So desperate time, desperate measures, b5. Again, hard to believe that this move is going to work especially when there's a bishop always coming to c8. But she makes sure that now maybe it's less appetizing to play check, king moves, bishop takes, queen b5. This could end up really, really poorly for black. So, bishop c8, again, very, very patient. Two defensive moves. I think this is really uh, the sign of just maturity in this position. Because here you think to yourself, well, can I just sack a rook by playing <coughs> something aggressive? Or should I just play one defensive move and now just go crazy, bishop h3 or something? But no. Simple defensive move, and now white is just losing. Queen b4, trying to do something, bishop d6. Again, a very, very clever move. Queen went to b3, and now it was time to take. Takes, rook e3. Just a beautiful, in my opinion, just a, a very, very smart way of conducting the attack. Completely repulsing any chances on the queen side. On the other hand, the white position, the white king's position looks like something unenviable. <coughs> now I want to play stuff like rook d8 and rook e2 check at the right time. I also want to play, um, well, check on h3 also at the absolute right time is going to lead to mate after doubling the rooks. So, queen c2. Check, here, rook takes g3. Again, I think that after king g1, rook takes g3 would have been even stronger. It would have been with check, right? So takes everything. So here, here, cb7, takes, rook takes f7. Again, Judith is trying to do the best that she can, or the worst that she can, I should say. And it looks like maybe she's getting away. Now c7 is under attack, and again, the black pieces looks like they're not working well together. So what, what are we going to do? We know that there's a bishop on the long diagonal threatening some, some interesting stuff, but if d4 check bishop e4, is that gonna be enough or not? What do you think? Well, simple, again. Just an amazing, to me, I mean, the, beautiful, the beauty of this game is not only the aggressive move and the sacrifices, but also the quiet moves, bishop e5, bishop c8, and now she just takes the time to play rook c8. Just like, it's almost like a slap in the face. Just when you think you might have generated some counterplay, she plays one quiet move and she says, okay, I have my same threats as before, it's your move, good luck, do your worst. So she tried bishop to b5. Again, she needs to do something against the idea of something like d4, bishop e4, d3. Now it's really going to kick because c7 is protected. So she tries to block this way, but now of course the ending is very simple. She plays d4 check, bishop c6, and one more move and she resigned. Beautiful, rook c3. To think that the best player in the world is playing with, for women, player in the world is playing with the white pieces, this just looks like a masterpiece. Beautiful, beautiful game. Combining attacking moves with defensive moves just in a smart way. So pretty impressive performance. 
For dessert, you're going to see a beautiful game, very short but really sweet, and then we can go to uh, go on to Maya Chibuda Linze. This is a very short and sweet game. I'm going to show it to you with very little remarks because it's self-explanatory. This is a game she's playing an opponent in the Georgian Championship of 1963. Really, really nice. Okay, this is going to be our starting position. And of course, the normal person will play g3, queen h3, maybe king f2, queen f1, you know, play some regular chess. Nona is not thinking like that. Sacrificing the first pawn, queen takes. By the way, this should have been a draw, and her brilliancy is recommended by the computer, but just for a draw. But again, humans have difficulty. So here, here, castles, 97. So at first, we look at this position, we think, OK, she, sh she sacked the, e the e F pawn, but did she really get a lot for it? Watch what happens. First, she goes here just in case black had nefarious ideas like castling. And knight c6, the normal move. Again, intending to castle. And things are looking very normal. You're probably already thinking how to continue. Should I go rook f2? Should I go queen e2, queen d2? Um, does it make sense to go with a bishop somewhere? Bishop f6, for example? Yeah, the, but, this is, but this should be a draw. So the combination she plays is beautiful, but so she plays here. OK. You guys play too much bug house. Exactly. That's the first so thing I thought of. you put a knight on h5, yeah. So of course, I suggest to take. Otherwise, it's becoming more expensive. And now in the spirit of bug house, rook takes f7, rook takes f7 <laughs> obviously. The natural move. And now, this is not a good move. This is losing. Who can tell me what is the defensive move? But this is a very non bug ish move. No. OK, that's a hint, because that's, it's maybe the least bug ish move. Uh, no. <laughs> Arjun? Nope. The computer only gives one defensive move here. I was really curious. But after it says draw by some amazing maneuver, yes. That's a bit over ambitious. I said, I said not bug house game. Not bug house move. Queen takes h2 is as bug house as it gets. Arjun, one more chance. Nope. h6. h6. That is the least Yes. And I think the game continues something like queen takes h5. And if you take here, then there's like king d8 and like some repetition queen h4, queen h5, and it's a draw. How exactly, I don't remember, but I'm sure that we can look at it. So here, we can even cheat to save time, because I have a lot of games to show you. And yeah, so bishop f4, bishop e5, and after takes, king has to move away, here, here, draw. However, the non-computer opponent Fell right into this. Can you switch off the, the, the what? Oh, the engine? It spoils everything? What's that? Like that? OK. So yeah, the surprise was that rook f5. Of course, if you take queen h5, yeah. Not good. So the only way to play on is queen takes f5, but it's not very appetizing. It's he. Yeah. I don't know if he resigned, but that's where the game ends. I don't get any more moves. Maybe he resigned. I, would, I know that I would have been demoralized enough to resign here. Yeah, of course, after pawn takes, queen takes h5. Why is it whistling? And that's not the move. <laughs> the mouse is refusing to play the spur. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, this is difficult. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that? That was nice. That was like something from Young Frankenstein. Checkmate. Yeah. All right. On we go to Maya. And I don't know how many games of Maya I'm going to be able to insert. 
So we're going to move very fast. <coughs> this is a game against uh, Elias Portish, who at the time was maybe not at his peak, because already 1998 when they played. And at one time, of course, he was one of the best players in the world. But it's very nice, very nice performance. So playing into a normal Queens Indian. And OK, lots of analysis that we're going to skip. Bishop to c1, repositioning the bishop. Rook d8, bishop b2, h6, queen b1, c5, so far normal. e3, knight c7, rook c1 here. So until now we played, I mean, this is, the idea is here, nothing is new. Typical hanging pawns position from Black's point of view. White plays the normal queen sortier inside. Everything is good. Right now, white has nothing to complain about. But watch what she does. Again, look how aggressive play against positional structure sometimes really pays off. First of all, retreat. So the knight is not pinned or anything. And there's no tricks. And now, this is the one commented analysis that I'm going to, I am going to go over. And this, I'm really surprised that Portage didn't go knight e5. Mainly because now both the queen and the knight are very annoyingly placed. And there's no g6 because of knight takes g6 and knight e6 is hanging. Instead, he opted for the more passive maneuver, knight e1. Again, trying to reposition the knight at the right time, maybe going knight d3, knight a4. He's trying to lure the pawns to advance. As we well know, in, in hanging pawn situation, White always wants to see one of those pawns advance, because if you advance the C pawn, then this becomes backward. You have this square forever, and bishop e7 is weak. If you advance the d4 pawn, many times it can be captured several times. And again, sometimes the c4 square can be used. But here, g6 hitting the queen, queen back, rook b8 protecting the bishop on b7. And now d4 is very, very hard to stop. White should have done, should have gone to greater lengths than he did to try to stop it because just, I guess, underestimated what's going to happen. Knight e2, knight e4, knight d3. Again, lots of ideas, but g5. Simply stopping knight f4, but not only. Watch the pawns on the king side and what happened. So. Yeah, now they mentioned the move g4, stopping all the pawns is a good move. Queen a1, rook b to c8. And now, again, last chance to play g4, because that still stops the idea of c4. Instead, this was played. And now, Nona comes into action. Until now, lots of maneuvering, maybe not much excitement. But now, watch how she disp dispatches of someone who was one of the best players of the world one time. f5. Knight e5, h5. That makes sure that the g4 square is extra protected. No hops from any pieces or pawns there. And now, after the last mistake, f3, well, what should have been done is, of course, f4, as it says. So f3 takes, takes, d4, bishop a5. Rook d5. F4 now, but now it's a bit late. Now, of course, she takes. If takes, takes, takes here. And F4 is coming. Of course, huge compensation. I mean, those pawns are going to be really, really embarrassing to stop. And alternatively, she took on, he took on b7. Rook takes e3. And again, analysis show that if takes, takes here, here. And the queen is coming to the long diagonal. That's very, very hard to meet. So rook bishop to d2. G takes f4. Now is the last chance. It looks like really scary to take the rook on e3, but that should have been done. There was no other choice. And she didn't do it for some reason. 
But again, taking on C8 and taking on E3 would have been the best practical chance. G takes F4 was played. Rook, oops, sorry, that went too fast. Rook E2, Queen B1, Queen to D7. Just remarkable. She's just playing for an attack and gets it. Yes, yeah, Sergeant, do you have a question? Queen where? King h1. I have a bishop on the long diagonal. Yeah. That's, what, that's exactly what she wants to get rid of. So bishop f3, d3. Again, I'm going a bit fast because I really want to show you the other game that is coming. But you can see that she's playing very actively, very aggressively, protecting her pawn on the sixth rank and very hard. And now, another exchange sacrifice. She was giving, how many exchanges did she sacrifice in this game? On c8, on e3, now on f3. Takes queen check. A beautiful sacrifice. Some of you might know the famous Natalia Fischer sacrifice of a queen on f4. This time it's a knight. And you can do whatever you want. Take it, don't take it. The king is already in trouble. In the game, it didn't take because after takes, check, here, doesn't look nice. So she played, oops, he played rook to g1, king here, with the idea of rook g8. If I could have played a game like this against Portish, I would have given a lot. So rook e1, rook g8, takes, check and bishop e5 resigns because after takes here very discouraging position because it's 1998 oh, okay. that was post peak that's that that was one of those veterans ladies matches that they used to hold in the okay. late 90s. Wait, yeah. how old is she? Does she? Nowadays, she is in her late 50s, I guess, or 60. Oh, or okay. yeah. Now we're going to see her, another beautiful win against uh, Malanyuk, a Russian grandmaster. Again, look at his performance. I, I, this probably is the best game. Say again? Wait, did this take place? 82, 82. Oh, wow. Okay. So he is a pretty serious grandmaster, but why is 24, 30? I thought he would be even higher rated. He's probably pretty young at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So we have the normal Grinfeld, queen a5, castle. Now we know that queen takes a2, bishop g5 is probably the main argument favored by many games of Kramnik as white. But black is now testing with queen takes c3. d5, a very nice position of sacrifice. Queen retreats, bishop g5, again a standard move to try to cause some chaos on the king side. Queen c7, queen c1, normal. Okay. <clears throat> this is a bit much, I know. Maybe she's playing a little bit optimistically, but as you will see, again, aggression pays off. e5, knight d7, rook e1. Objectively, black is not doing very badly here. It's just extra pawn and is still defending. White is an impressive center, but it shouldn't really go that far. Knight b6, d6, again, very, very ambitious. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Rook e8, h3, bishop d7. Okay, this move I'm a bit critical about. I think that bishop e6 would have been a much more testing move. A, it keeps the file closed. It keeps an eye on this diagonal and this pawn and takes care of some very important squares. Those squares and especially this diagonal is very, very relevant. I think that he just played a bit optimistically. He didn't realize, he thought, okay, she has a pawn, I mean, I have a pawn, she has some initiative, it's going to take a long time before I can either cash in with the pawn or she will try to prove her superiority. 
He just didn't, didn't appreciate what was about to happen to him. So here, bishop h6, okay? And again, a bit of a callous move in my opinion, bishop h8, really? what? knight g5, because white's attack is developing very quickly. Right now you can't see it, that's the brilliancy of this game. You think, what could be bad about black's position? Well, you take a look in two, three moves and you will see. What's, I mean, isn't bishop h8 like just a typical <coughs> idea in these? Yes, but when you have time, not when you don't have time. What do you recommend instead of just, you know, um, obviously not bishop takes, right? No, 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 definitely not bishop takes. I'm re trying to remember what, what went on here. Um, I think you could play bishop e6. You might be able to still play it. You might still be able to play it. It's very important to, to avoid what happened in the game. Because in the game what happened was after this, knight g5, already there is a lot of pressure. This is already, in my opinion, becoming very, very difficult. Maybe the opponent played bishop f5, that's an outright mistake. But I think that already there's some element where I'm going to play bishop b5 and my knight is hitting e6 if you go bishop e6. That's already, I think the black already, in my opinion, maybe missed the boat or at least close to that. Now white's initiative is very strong. I've, I like white in this position. Before it was just a game, like compensation for the pawn. But now it's no longer that. So this was played. And in this position, it should become obvious. Now come two exchange sacrifices. First of all, takes this one. We don't need this junk, right? <laughs> After this, now bishop c4, the whole point. I wanted to conquer the diagonal. And blockade the queen side. That's right. And I'm threatening bishop f7 with a better game. <clears throat> How to stop it even? I don't know. You're about to lose everything you own here. <laughs> so here, only move. And now, listen, I do need my knight, and there's no way you're getting my bishop, so there's another rook for you. Just like a month, I mean, to think you're playing a grandmaster and you're doing this, this is like, how much more fun can it be? So here, queen f4, again, threatening a little visit to f7. Just, fun just phenomenal. So what to do in this position? Queen d7, I think it's the only move, not, nothing really else to do. And Okay, it looks like your pieces are at maximum capacity, right? Answer, no. Bishop e5. As if it was not enough to give two exchanges, now he just delivers the final blow, and after bishop here, resigned. What to play? What to do? You have to play rook a d8. Rook f8, I play bishop f8. And then rook f8 takes and takes, I'm up a piece, and the pawn on d6 is looking cool. Yeah, I mean, just a masterpiece. True, black didn't play the most stubborn defense maybe, but very impressive finish. Could he have swung the knight back over? Um, sorry, instead of playing bishop h8, he played like knight e5 and 6 Or is he giving up? You mean here? Yeah, like, I don't, I'm not certain about the knight on... Um, you know, here, oh, before my knight went to g5, I still think bishop e6, but knight d5, maybe. Maybe. Anything would have been better than just giving me the time to build knight g5 and get a bishop to c4. Okay. okay, since we still have some time, very quickly we'll see the last dessert. And this is, I'm not going to show you the whole game, or at least I'm going to really breeze through it. She only played Nigel Short two times. She played him in 1993 and in 1995, the result 2-0. Now we're talking about a guy that was like a, a candidate, so pretty impressive. So I don't think the readings are right. I don't think short was 25, 10, and 83. I think he was much higher rated, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. More likely. So he's playing the classical Karo Khan, and uh, what do you call it? Larsen type Karo Khan. Yeah. Takes, and she plays a very quiet variation, but watch what happens from it. Queen c7 to stop bishop f4, knight f4, knight f3, bishop g4. C4, E6, castles, knight D7, D5. Already the sign of aggression. Again, every time she has a chance, she immediately puts some oil into the fire. Um, objectively, is that the best move? Maybe not. Maybe you should play quietly like B3, bishop B2, be a little more patient about it. Or Does she always play like this? Oftentimes, especially in the younger years. Okay. She was never shy from a fight. 
So castles, normal. Pawn takes e6, knight e5. Again, everything is normal here. Now, if white just plays a move like queen b3, and I go back, f takes e6, black really has nothing to complain about. So she plays knight d2. Again, objectively, I'm not saying these are the best moves or she's playing a, a, like a brilliant game, but she is just seeking a fight and willing to compromise a little bit to get it. I think when you're not playing Carlson or a computer, that's not a bad strategy. So bishop took back on e6, queen a4, aggressive. And short doesn't bother to defend the pawn on, on a7, knight e4, bishop takes c4. I have to tell you, this move should have been very, very good for black. Obviously, after bishop takes c4, knight f3 check, and queen h2 mate, it's very, very convincing. So <clears throat> for a moment, she looks like she's in trouble, and she is. But look what happened here, here. She just gives up an exchange. This is not justified, by the way. Like I said, I'm not showing you the game. I'm breezing through the game to get to the position where she did something very, very impressive. So knight d3, queen a7, queen e5, bishop e3, queen takes knight, check, check, here, here. OK, so the king is starting a little travel. And objectively, it should not be enough. It should be, at best, I think, I don't know if here it should be a draw, or very close to a draw after taking the knight, but he managed to do something very, very nice. So b4, again, what else to play? Because nothing else works. You don't have rook c1. Queen a5, the, the, the king just hides. So b4, takes. Of course, knight takes, rook c1 is looking different. And queen takes, I just take the knight on d3, I guess, yeah. Wait, so. Queen C4 then? Say again? Queen D4, Queen D3, Queen C4. Um, let's take a look. Okay, first of all, let me verify that I really want to play Queen D3, that I didn't lie. Oh yeah, of course I take it because I take on F7 and G8, yeah. There's no queen c4. Yeah. Yeah, difficult. Wow. So king, king took, bishop f3, queen moved, check. And now I think he played um, a very optimistic move. Knight b2, that should lose. I think that the right move was king somewhere, king c3 or king c5, one of those moves. And he is actually surviving. It should be, it shouldn't win. But what he missed was very, very neat. He missed it after this. Check. Here she has this move. And after queen takes, queen a5 looks like mate. So yeah, so short was unhappy. <laughs> you can on, I can only imagine his face somewhere around here. So b5 here. Yes, Arjun. Sure. Here, by the way, black resigned. To where? Checkmate. Did you hear why? Yeah. yeah. Who said that? Checkmate. Houdini. Yeah. So after this, just game over. And she beats another mega character. OK, guys, thank you very much for attending the class. I hope you enjoyed it.